cancer therapy chemosensitivity testing, in my mind, after 40 years of practicing cancer medicine, is probably the biggest sea change that I have seen in all my years of practice with over 200,000 patient visits over 40 years. The advent of chemosensitivity testing in our practice has made a major difference in terms of patient success rates and improved overall survival rates. And this shows up in our current five-year, 500-patient study using various combinations of conventional and natural therapies in what is termed the overall designation of integrative oncology. Let me explain a little how this testing works and how it's done. Patients come to me, either virginal patients who have had no treatment at all, or patients who have had multiple drug chemotherapy, radiation, and perhaps even surgery to start with. They're in situations where their disease is progressing, most commonly, and they're mostly stage four patients, although not necessarily. These patients are seeking answers. They know that their disease is progressing. They know that their prognosis is guarded. They know that their time factors are limited. And they want answers, real answers. They don't want a guessing game. They don't want a, an oncologist who just picks out drugs, throws them against the wall, and sees if they stick in terms of their own cancer response rates. What we do and what we tell the patient is by taking their whole blood, and this is different than taking a piece of tumor from their body. And remember, you can't always get an adequate sample of tumor if the patient has brain, lung, liver, or bone metastases. You have to rely on this test only on whole blood taken from the patient, which is a very easy sample to obtain. This blood is then handled very specially with special packaging, shipping requirements, and it has to be drawn at the first part of the week in order to get it to its des destination in Europe in a safe and preserved and fresh manner. The blood is then subjected to very high technology testing. There are four labs in the world that do this testing that we're aware of. There may be more, but we're not aware of them. Two in Germany, one in Greece, and one in Korea. We have found, after using the German testing, that the Korean test offers the most important information in terms of the number of chemotherapy agents tested as well as the number of supplements tested. In fact, in the Greek test, which is known as the RGCC, which stands for the Research Genetic Cancer Center, they test 18 families of chemotherapy agents and 38 families of supplements. So once they have the blood, it takes anywhere from 10 days to two weeks, sometimes a little longer, to analyze the sample and to harvest the cancer cells from the blood, break them down genetically, and then determine the gene markers. These gene markers then are compared with what the various chemotherapy agents do in relationship to these markers. And from this information, they are able to tell which drugs work the best out of the 18 and which supplements out of the 38 work the best. They then send a full report back to me via fax or email and then I can sit down immediately with that patient, draw up a formula that marries both the, the conventional drugs and the best supplements into a protocol which then becomes the patient's own genetic blueprint. This is a very, very specific and definitive test. No other oncologist in the United States can offer this kind of information to their patients. What they offer only is 
what has been the best results on the latest clinical study. And remember, none of these studies is ever 100%. Many are only 30, 40, or 50%. So there's going to be half the patients or two-thirds of the patients at any one time that are going to fail the studies, and they're getting poisons. Remember, if the drug isn't working for them, these are cellular toxins, and they cause enormous damage to the body, uh, anywhere from chemo brain syndrome to cardiac toxicities to liver and kidney toxicities to peripheral neuropathies to bone marrow suppression to severe incapacitating rashes and so on. The ultimate toxicity, of course, is death. And it's not unusual for patients after a severe bout of chemotherapy to actually die. And the death is usually from overwhelming sepsis or hemorrhage due to severe bone marrow depression, sometimes from cardiotoxicity, which disables the heart function, and the patient goes into a cardiomyopathy-induced cardiac failure. So once we marry the protocol together, then I recommend low-dose fractionated insulin-potentiated therapy as my first choice, or if the patient wishes to go conventional, they at least know what is the best drugs for them at that point. So they have the right answer, which they can either be treated by me or more preferentially go back to their homes and be treated by their local oncologist. We also send them home with the appropriate supplements. Out of the 38 various supplements, perhaps 6 or 12 or 15 will be listed as being very effective against their cancer. So they're, sh they're sent home with a shipment of the supplements which they hand carry and which we will renew on a monthly basis. So this is the real value of the chemosensitivity testing. And as I said earlier, in my 40 years of practice with over 200,000 patients, this has been a sea change in my practice and has accounted for a much higher response rate to the therapy that I recommend or personally give to them. Thank you very much.